Good evening, children. So, children, I'm going to tell you the story of a farmer who lived a long, long time ago. His name was Mika, which means who is like God, and lived in the village called Morse. Daddy, look, we can make a whole bottle from this bunch. Let me taste one. Hmm, this is really tasty. Don't eat too much, Atalia. It could upset your stomach. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. Let her enjoy the God's blessings. If we get such a good yield from olives and figs also, then we can repay our debts quickly. Don't worry about the debts so much. Our King Jotham is a kind man. Yes, he gave us this land. And he even gave enough loan to us. He is as good as his father, King Uzia. Hmm. Who knows the way of the Lord? Yes, that's why I told you not to worry about the debts too much. God will provide us. Lord God, we praise you and give you thanks for blessing us with a good harvest. Mika worked day and night on his fields. He hoped to repay his debts to his lenders by this harvest season. That day, after plowing the land, he was returning home. My car, my car. Huh? Oh, Abia, it's so good to see you. My car, I'd like to talk to you about something. Sure, Abia. What is it? Well, what do you think of a marriage between Jonah and Athalia? Jonah likes her very much, you know. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea. Why don't you come with me to my home, and I will talk to my wife about this. Abaya, it's so good to see you. Hello. How is your wife, and how is Jonah? They are all fine. Listen, go and sit inside. We have got something great to tell you. Listen, dear. Abaya has a proposal for our daughter. Huh? Who is the groom? I was asking Atalia for my eldest son Jonah. Oh, it's wonderful! <laughs> Atalia, Atalia, come here. Yes, mother. Atalia, we've got some wonderful news for you. What is it, mother? Do you know Abaya's eldest son Jonah? Of course I do. We used to play with each other when we were kids. Hmm. And now Abaya has got a proposal for you to marry him. Ha. Huh. Oh. She's blushing. <laughs> father? I heard what you were talking. It's a very good proposal, father. I know Jonah as a friend, and he's a good person. Hmm. Now that we all agree, Why don't we fix a date for the wedding? Of course. Do you have any dates in mind? How about Friday after next week? 6th day of the week. The day God created Adam and Eve. That's great. It's fine with me. All right. That's fixed then. Abaya, we'll meet at the fields tomorrow and we'll discuss other details. Of course. Let's meet at the field tomorrow. I leave now. Father, father. <sighs> What is it, son? Our king. <sighs> What happened, son? King Jotham died today. His son Ahaz has become the king of Judah. What? Oh no. King Jotham was a kind man. I wonder how our new king is going to be. He's so young and reckless. Hmm. A king was only 41 years old. May his soul rest in peace. My car, it's getting late for me. I must leave now. We'll meet tomorrow at the fields. Sure, Abia. See you tomorrow. And as they had planned, Jana and Atalia was about to get married that day. Children, 
Remember to keep the promise you make today. Athalia, daughter of Micah, I promise to marry you according to the law of Moses. What is that sound? It's the sound of drums. It's the king's messenger. Listen everybody. These are the orders of King Ahaz. Syria and Israel have joined forces against Judah. All males between 16 and 35 must enlist in the army within a week. Oh no, my son. And all the money borrowed from the treasury must be returned immediately. Huh? How? But that's impossible. How are we going to pay our debts at such short notice? No. Why should we send our sons to get slaughtered? No. This cannot be real. God help us, please. Oh my god, both of my sons are leaving us. Mother, stop crying. We will defeat their army and come back soon. Father, bless us. Take care of your brother and come back alive, my son. We will, father. Don't worry. Mikah's both sons left them that day to fight in the war. Mikah didn't realize that he was seeing his sons for the last time as they were about to die in that war. My Lord God, please keep my son safe. Stop worrying, my dear. The Lord will protect him. Mm. But what about the debts? How are we going to repay within a week? Well, we'll have to sell the grain and everything we've got, but even that won't be enough. What are we going to do? I'm going to the market tomorrow. I will ask Laban to give me a loan. Only then can we save our land. Don't worry, dear. It's going to be all right. Yes. Lord God will never leave us. The next day, Mika went to the market for selling his goods. But it was a chaos there in the market. Farmers had to sell their products at cheap prices, and the shopkeepers were making profits out of the situation. What? This is cheating. A shekel for 50 liters? Yes, the prices are going down. Didn't you know? But, but that's not even half the price. Listen, if you want to sell, then this is the price. If you don't like it, then you may go elsewhere. But please, I've had to work so hard to produce this. That's none of my concern. Now move aside. Let the next person come. Hello, Laban. Micah? My friend, what brings you here? Laban, I'm here to sell my goods, and I also want to borrow some money. No problem. Show me what you have. Hmm. I can give you 200 shekels for these. What? 200 shekels? That's not even half the price. Listen, Micah. The prices are going down every minute because of the king's orders. Every farmer is desperate to sell their produce. But, but... You may check the prices with other shopkeepers here in the market. Nobody will be willing to give you as much as I have offered. All right, I'll take it. I have no other choice. Here is the money. While Mika had gone out to sell his goods, the soldiers came to Morshed to collect the taxes. Help! Help! Give us the money or give me your bangles. What? What is happening? Isn't that Mika's house? Yes, it is. What is going on? We have come to collect the taxes. Have you got the money ready? No, but my husband has gone to the market for selling our goods. We will pay back the money as soon as he comes back. Now? The deadline was yesterday. You need to pay now or give us your ornaments. How dare you talk to us like that? Go away. I'm not giving you anything. Let my husband come back and then and then we'll pay. Mother, mother, stop it. Uh, uh, leave me. Stop there, you. 
<laughs> this will be our share. We will come back tomorrow to get the 500 shekels. That's enough. We have got them. You can leave the boy now. Mother, mother, are you all right? No, we lost everything. Oh God, why? <sighs> it's robbery. The farmers had to sell everything for almost nothing. Hmm. Why is it so quiet here? Atalia, nobody home? Father! Father, you are home. Yes, what happened here? Why is it so silent? Oh dear, the king's soldiers were here when you were gone. King's soldiers? They came here to collect the taxes. But when I told them that we will pay tomorrow, they harassed the whole village and took our ornaments. Father, they were a bunch of thugs. They harassed mother and didn't let her go even when she pleaded. What? How dare they? There are laws in this land and even the soldiers must obey them. I'm going to the court tomorrow. I will ask the judge to take action against the soldiers who did this. No, dear. I don't think that's a good idea. They are king's people. Yes, father. The court is filled with soldiers. And they won't like it if you go and complain against one of them. No, I will not let this go just like that. Punishment should be given to those who harassed my wife. Mika was shattered by what had happened. He thought he could get justice from the courts. The next day, Mika went to meet the judge. Next, Mika, what's your complaint? Your Honor, when I was not at my house, two soldiers came to my house and... Stop it. This is not the place to bring charges against the soldiers. Give me your complaint in writing and I'll forward it to the concerned authorities. Then why are you sitting here? Aren't you sitting there to hear the complaints? Watch your mouth. I am the judge and I can punish you if you offend me any more. I don't care. If you can't give justice to the poor, then you shouldn't be here. God, kick him out of here and give him a taste of justice. How dare you? Huh. You want to file a complaint against us? Here, here, take this. Ah! Mika got beaten by the soldiers. He was very much disappointed. All his life he had worked hard to live a respectable life and today his wife was harassed. The judge insulted him and he got beaten by the soldiers. He had also lost all of his savings in the market today. But Mika was a man of faith. He decided to start working again to repay his debts and to get his house in order. But one day, when Mika had gone to the nearby town, an army of soldiers came to his fields. The king had given away the village of Moshe to the soldiers for building their houses. But the farmers of Moshe didn't know about this. The soldiers marched in to send the farmers away. Hey, look! There's a huge army coming towards here. Maybe that's our sons coming home. But... I don't have a good feeling about this. People of Moshe, the army is taking over this village. You must leave this land immediately. You can stay here and be our slaves if you want. What? This is our land. We your slaves? Never. If you resist, then we'll have to use force. We will never let you take our land. We will fight to our death. Yeah, we will never let you step into our fields. Soldiers, attack! The villagers resisted the army and what followed was a brutal massacre. Most of the villagers were killed and their houses were burned down. When Mikar returned, all that was left of his family and his house was ashes. No! Oh God, those 50 soldiers killed my wife, my son, my daughter 
What am I going to do? Where is the Holy One of Israel? Where is the God who came down to free us from Egypt? Don't you have the eyes to see the fields soaked in blood of the farmers? Enough. I can't go on anymore. I'm going to join my family. Miko. Huh? Who are you? I am God, whom you challenged. If you are God, then allow me to join my wife and children. I know your pain. You lost your wife and children. They are my children. I watched my children falling by the sword. Their cry pierced my heart. Then, why do you keep quiet? Mika, you won't understand my pain now. Your children are safe with me. Then please, please allow me to join them. Not yet. Your pain will turn into fury and strength. Go and face the commanders, the judges and the king. They rejected me. Make them drink the cup of my wrath. But, but Lord, I'm old and ignorant. Fear not. You will be filled with my spirit. Micah was filled with the spirit of the Lord. Receiving the strength, Micah became a new man and started his mission. Dayton, you coward! You murdered! Huh? You slaughtered my wife and children! You shed the blood of innocent! Who is he? That's Micah, the owner of this place where we built this house. So what? Guards, arrest that lunatic! Get away! Oh! Hmm. But when the guards came to arrest him, they got terrified because Mika was filled with God's spirit. You think you can live in peace in those houses? This mud was soaked in my sweat. This land smells of my children. Why don't you do anything? Uh, I, I am scared. You took over our fields. The hand of the Lord is about to fall upon you. Why did you let him go away after he said so much? It's true. Everything he said was true. Our hands are stained with blood. Mika, burning with the fury of Lord, walked to Jerusalem, the capital. After warning the judges there, he then proceeded to the palace to meet the king. Isn't that Mika? Yes, he is. But he... He looks so different now. Hey, did you hear that he terrorized the commander Dayton this morning? It seems the spirit of the Lord is upon him. All right. I think Mika has become a real prophet. You took over our fields. Ahaz, you corrupted one. How dare you sit on the throne of my servant David? Huh? You flooded the streets of Jerusalem with the blood of innocence. Shut up! This is the royal court. So, you are the high priest? Yes, I am. How dare you slaughter innocent babies in the name of sacrifices? Huh? It was. It was sacrifice to the Lord. You coward! Couldn't you cut your own throat and offer a sacrifice? Who asked you to offer human sacrifices? Stop it! I am the king in this country. I decide on laws. And there are codes to ensure it. Because of you, Zion will become a plow land, Jerusalem a heap of rubble, and the mountain of temple will turn into a forest. Your Majesty, should we still tolerate this? Your days are numbered. A king will come from Bethlehem. He will rule in peace and justice. Shut up! It is God who made the king of this land. And God will pull you down from your throne. You robbed the poor and crossed the weak. Why is king letting him talk like that? This is what God asks of you. Act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly. Jerusalem will be purified in fire. It will again become the city of peace and justice. 
Mika challenged everyone in authority, but no one dared to touch him. God was protecting him. And in a few days, the Philistines captured Morsheth and destroyed the city. Thus the words of Mika were fulfilled. Mika went around the towns and villages proclaiming the message of peace and justice. He was a man who was filled with the Spirit of God. So that was the story of Mika. Did you all like it? Yes, Father. Good. Then shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, Father. All right. Then tell me the meaning of the name Mika. The name Mika was derived from the Hebrew word Michael, which means one who is like God. Hmm, that's very good, Lucy. Now tell me where Mika was born. Mika was born in the city of Mors. Very good, Matthew. Now tell me, what was the first tragedy that happened in his life? Mika had to send his sons away for war. As per the orders of King Ahaz, that was the first tragedy. Correct. Now I want you all to repeat this verse from Mika with me. Yes, Father. Act justly. Act justly. Love tenderly. Love tenderly. And walk humbly with your God. And walk humbly with your God. Now let's say that together. Act, Act justly. justly. Love tenderly. And walk humbly with your God. That's very good. Now before we leave for the day, let me tell you which story I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Which story is that, Father? Tomorrow I'm going to tell you the story of a prophet who was sent by the Lord to call the whole nation to conversion. A prophet who was made holy by the Holy God. The story of Isaiah. All right, that's all for today. See you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Good morning, kids. Good, Good morning, morning, Father. Hmm. Before I begin, I want to ask you something. Have you heard about the Ten Commandments? Uh, what is that? Have you heard about that, Matthew? I... I... That's all right. Do you know about the Ten Commandments, George? It is the Ten Laws that God gave Moses for people to follow. Hmm, very good. That's correct. So, children, we are going to learn today about the Ten Commandments. I'm going to tell you the story of how God gave these commandments to Moses. Shall I start? The Hebrews who reached Egypt with Joseph enjoyed freedom and prosperity till the middle of 16th century. But with the emergence of a new dynasty, they were subjected to cruel slavery and torture. There were so many Hebrew slaves, and the Pharaoh feared they might start a rebellion against them. These Hebrews, these children of Israel, I don't like them. Yes, Your Majesty. They are terrible people. They are not like us. There are too many of them. They could start their own army. They could one day rebel against us. Yes, my lord, they could do that. I have tried everything, overloading them with work so that they'll drop and die, doubling their taxes, everything. I must not let them grow in numbers anymore. Yes, my lord, we must not let their population grow. I must break their will this time. Break their hearts and bring them down this time. Yes, we must bring them down. Summon the gods, go out and take every Hebrew baby and throw them into the Nile. Yes, my lord, we must throw. Uh, what? But my lord, the babies? 
Yes, the babies. These Hebrews must fear me. They should understand that I am their God. Now go and inform this to the commander and others. Yes, your majesty. Commander, commander. Ha 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 ha. They shall now worship me. <sighs> go away. My child, don't take him. Don't take him, please. Uh, go away. <laughs> there were cries everywhere, and it was now time. God was about to intervene and help the sons of Israel. But one mother was not willing to let her son die. My son will live. Mother, are you going to float him in the river? We have no other option. If your brother has to survive, then this is the only way. May God guide you, my son. Nobody is going to hurt my baby brother. The basket floated for many hours and finally stopped near the Pharaoh's palace. And the basket was spotted by Pharaoh's daughter. Huh? What is that? Nate, bring me that basket. Baby? It's a Hebrew child, Princess. We must throw him back into the river. What? Kill this innocent baby? No! I will not let this child get killed. I will bring him up as my own son. He will be a prince over all men because he was drawn from water. His name shall be Moses. destined for great things, Moses. I feel it in my heart, my son. Moses grew up in the palace like a prince. Moses, along with Pharaoh's son, Ramesses, learned the scriptures together. He also learned to fight like a prince. On his 21st birthday, Pharaoh invited Moses to his palace to celebrate. Moses, I am so happy for you. Thank you so much. Here is your birthday gift. From now on, you will be in charge of all the Hebrew slaves in our kingdom. No. Are you happy? I am. I am so grateful. Get up. Get up. You are my son, Moses. Ugh! No, please don't. Huh? Shut up. Shut up, you lazy fool. No, please stop. Do you think you can get away with this acting? Stand up. Please. What? What's going on here? Who are you to ask? No. Ah. No. Ah. Get away, you! I told you to stop! Ah. How dare you! I am going to teach you a lesson! Oh no, 
What have I done? Oh no. Moses! 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 Who are you? You... You look like me. I am Aaron, son of your nurse. So? She's not your nurse, Moses. She's your mother. What? But... But I'm the prince of Egypt. Uh, Moses, don't you remember the basket? The blanket that mother gave you? I... I... Uh, yes. Don't you remember your sister, Miriam? Miriam? Miriam is my sister? Yes, Moses. Don't you remember anything? I... I... I have dreamt of those, but I never believed they were real. They are real, Moses, and I'm your brother, Aaron. My brother! My brother! Moses! We all love you, Moses. But now, you must ride for your life. No, I am a prince of Egypt. I don't have to run anywhere. Take this donkey and flee while you still can. What about you, Miriam, my family? We will survive. We always have. And we, we always will. Get on the donkey and leave now. Yes, master. They will come and kill you. Please leave now. But, but... Trust me, Moses. They are here now, Moses. We will see each other again, Moses. I know it. I feel it. Moses walked for many days in the desert without food and water. He wandered aimlessly. I'm sorry, donkey. I hope we'll find some place to get water soon. What? Where are you going? Stop! What's that? You have saved us. Goats are thirsty. Boo aside, I said. Stop him! You. Ah! Stop it! The women were here first. You can either fight with me or stand for your turn. Who do you think you are? Let's teach him a lesson. Here. You still want to fight? Run! Run! Are you all right? Yes, we are. Thank you so much. Can I get some water? Of course. Here. Thank you. Drink well, my friend. What's your name? Uh, Moses. I am Zipporah, daughter of the head priest Jethro. Are you a Hebrew? No. Yes, I'm a Hebrew. I'm just a stranger in a strange land. Please come with us. My father will want to thank you for saving us. Okay, I will come.
Moses married Zipporah and settled in the land of Midian. He looked after the flocks of Jethro. Moses had two sons, and he was very happy and content with his life. I'm leaving, dear. I will be back by evening. Don't go too far. All right, woman. <laughs> but in Egypt, the children of Israel were being tortured. They were treated very badly, and their cries came up to God. God chose Moses to help Abraham's descendants. Hey, you little one, you have had enough to eat? <laughs> oh, I think it's time to leave. Come on, everyone. Come here. Hey, come here. Don't go there. Stop. You, be careful. Come here. What is that? I have never seen anything like that before. A fire that doesn't burn the bush. And when he reached near that bush, God spoke to him. Moses. Huh? Moses. Moses. Ah, oh, I'm here. I am. I'm right here. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. I, I have taken off my shoes. I am Yahweh, God of Israel. I am the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. I have seen the condition of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cries. I mean to deliver them out of the hands of Egyptians and bring them to the land that was promised to their fathers. I will send you, Moses, to free them, and you will bring my people to serve me upon this mountain. Who am I, Lord, to do this? If I go back to Egypt, and say that I was sent by God, nobody would believe me. What do I tell them? Give the people my message, and they will follow you out of Egypt to this mountain, and then you will lead them to their true home, a land that will flow with milk and honey for them all. Do not be afraid. Do as I've instructed Moses, and I will be with you. And following God's instructions, Moses left his home, his wife and children. Do you really have to go? God has spoken. I must go. But, but you were really happy here. No, dear. I'm sorry to say this, but I wasn't really happy staying here. How could I be happy knowing that my people were being crushed in Egypt? But, but... We have talked about this. I have to go. Father, don't go. Come on, son. I have told you. I'm following God's instructions. Will we ever see you again? Of course, son. You must have faith. We will wait for you, Moses. We will wait. Bye, Father. Bye, son.
We have made it. We are here. We made it here, my friend. Ah, come on, donkey. Let's sit here for some time. Here, drink some water. Moses? Who? Aaron! <laughs> my brother! Moses, you're here! Brother! Miriam? Miriam, my sister. <laughs> Baby brother, I knew we would meet again someday. But how did you know that I'll be coming? I had a dream. God told me to meet you here. It was no dream, brother. We have to do as he has commanded. The situation here has worsened, Moses. What happened, brother? The king died last year, and now his son Remesis is ruling. He's ruthless, arrogant, and a slave master. He's torturing our people. Our sufferings have grown tenfold under him, Moses. Mm, all our troubles are going to end soon. We will go and see Pharaoh tomorrow. Remesis? Yes. I haven't seen him in years. Yes, we will. Let's go to our home now. I told our people that you would be coming. I told them about the land that God promised them. Aaron, I'm glad you are with me. We are going to need all the help that we can get. I will always be by your side, Moses. Thank you, my brother. You will be staying with us, little brother. Take good rest. You have much to do tomorrow. Moses? Moses the murderer. Moses the coward. Remesis, I come on urgent business. I come as a representative of God. Representative of God, huh? Ha ha ha! And what does he have to say? God has spoken to me. The Lord God of Israel says, Let my people go. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Oh Moses, you expect me to just let the Hebrews leave? Just like that? Because of a God who I haven't heard of wants me to? You should mind your own business and get out of here. You are pathetic in my eyes. You are a fraud. I am the God of Egypt. Show him. It's time. Behold the power of the Lord God. Son, it's just a trick. Bring our magicians. Yes, Master. Oh, a snake, is it? Here you go. Huh? Ha 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 ha! See two snakes. Even our magicians can outdo your so-called god. Our magicians are better. Hey, look! His snake is eating ours! Huh? Father? Hear me, Pharaoh. Let my people go. Tell your god that Pharaoh will not release his slaves. No! Tell your god that I'll increase their work. I will no longer give them straw to make their bricks. They will have to find their own straw. Tell your god that. You are going to suffer for this. That's enough for today, children. I will tell you the rest of the story tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, Father.
Father John is going to tell us the story of Saul today. Yay! Haha, <laughs> you're so excited, Matthew. Yes, he is going to tell us the story of Saul, the first king of Israel. Let's sit here and wait for Father. There he comes. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Good evening, everyone. So, children, which story did I tell you yesterday? You told us the story of Prophet Samuel. All right. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Are you ready? Yes, Father. We are. Saul was anointed as the king at a very critical moment in the history of Israel. Philistines were very powerful and they were taking away the land that God had promised Israelites. The very existence of Israel was threatened. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then, you shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. In the hill country of Judea, there was a little town called Gaibe. In that town lived a man named Kish who belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. One day, some of his donkeys got lost. He sent his son, Saul, along with a servant in search of the donkeys. This happened a few days after Samuel promised the Israelites that he would give them a king. <sighs> I am tired. Let's search for some more time. Master, forget the donkeys. Let's return back home. They must be worried thinking about us. Won't it be a shame to return empty-handed? I've heard that there is a prophet around here. Let's go and talk to him. Yes, master. Come, maybe he can help us in finding the donkeys. Hey, look, there's someone there. Let's go and ask him. Hey, hello, sir. Yes, how can I help you? Sir, we heard that there is a prophet around here. Do you know him? Oh, did you mean the prophet Samuel? Yes. He is in town. You may find him on top of this mountain. Thank you, sir. Come, let's get to the top of this mountain. Have we reached, Master? <sighs> yes, we have reached the top. Oh, there's someone over there. Let's go and ask him. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Could you please help us find Prophet Samuel? We are coming from Gaibe. I am Samuel. Did you? Did you just say that you are coming from Gaibe? Yes. We are from Gaibe. And is your name Saul? Whoa! Yes, my name is Saul. But how did you know? God, it's like you told me in my vision. Thank you, God. Master, we come in search for our donkeys. They were lost a few days back. Don't worry about the donkeys anymore. They have been found. Come with me. You can stay with me tonight. 
Yes, master. Samuel had a vision about Saul the night before. And when he saw Saul, he knew that he was the chosen one by God to be the king of Israel. Saul stayed with Samuel that night and they were about to return back home the next morning. Saul? Saul, wait there. Yes, master. Saul? I want to show you something. Tell your servant to go on without us. You go ahead. I'll join you in some time. What is it, Master? Why did you want me to stay? Kneel down, Saul. Yes, Master. Saul, God has anointed you to be the king of Israel. You will save God's people from their enemies. Master? I... I don't think I'm worthy. I come from a humble family. It doesn't matter. You will know it's true because on your way, you will find three men. Huh? One of them will be carrying three lambs. The second will be carrying three loaves of bread. And the third will be carrying a wineskin with him. And as you reach Mount Gaibe, the prophets will come out playing music and they will be chanting. The Spirit of the Lord will seize you at that moment. What? What am I supposed to do then? Don't worry. Do what you may at that moment. Like Samuel had foretold, Saul met with the men on his way. And when he reached Mount Gaibe, he saw the prophets coming down chanting and playing music. Ah, it's just like he told me. And now the prophets too. When Saul saw the prophets, the Spirit of the Lord came over him, and he was transformed into a new man. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Hey, isn't he the son of Kish? Yes, he is. But what happened to him? I think the Spirit of Lord has come over him. Is Paul one of the prophets too? Looks like he's one too. Hallelujah! The people of Israel gathered at Mount Mizbah as Samuel had directed them. They were waiting eagerly to meet their new king. People of Israel, you have elected Saul, son of Kish from the tribe of Benjamin as your king. Saul, son of Kish, long live the king, long live the king. Saul, God has chosen you to protect Israelites from the enemy. You should always remember to be just and kind and be like a father to them. I will, Master. You should also care for the poor. And you should not accumulate wealth. Do not build palaces for your own use. I will never forget your words, Master. I will never forget what you have done for me. Thank you so much. After Saul was anointed as the king, he returned home and started working in the field as usual. After about a month, two men came to meet him. My king? Huh? Who are you? We are coming from the north, from a town called Jabesh Gilead. What do you want? Why have you come here? My king, the Ammonites have surrounded our town. We surrendered and begged for a treaty, and they agreed. If they have agreed to your treaty, then why have you come here? My lord, they are crazy people. Do you want to know the terms of the treaty? Hmm, 
They want to pluck out the right eye of all our residents. Huh? And we have got only seven days to give them an answer. If we don't agree, then they will attack the town and kill everyone. Is that so? Hmm. Please save us, my lord. We have got nowhere else to go. Don't worry. I will take care of this. You can return to your town now. God will look after you. Thanks, my lord. Saul assembled a huge army by threatening the people of Israel. And a huge crowd came to march with him. Listen, everyone. Jabesh Gilead is under siege. And the Ammonites are going to kill everyone in town. We must attack them and protect our people. Yay! Yay! Get ready to attack as soon as you hear the trumpet blowing. Yeah! yeah! Attack! attack! Under the leadership of Saul, the Israelites attacked the Ammonites and they won the war in a very short time. Ha ha ha! We have won! Long live King Saul! Praise the Lord who gave us a king! We now have a king! Nobody will dare to attack us now! <laughs> Where is my son? Jonathan! Jonathan! Where are you, Jonathan? I'm here, father. Put me down, please. Why did you call me, father? Jonathan, I need you to go to Gilgal for a sacrifice. I want you to move to Gaibe with a thousand men. The rest of the army will come with me to Gilgal. Gaibe, but you know that the Philistine fortress is on the way. What if they attack? Then you must take a different route. After my sacrifice at Gilgal, I'll come and join you. All right, father. I will do as you have told me. You take care, my son. Saul arrived in Gilgal and waited for Samuel to arrive to begin the sacrifice. Saul's son Jonathan had reached Gaibe. Master, we have been waiting for seven days. Can't we offer the sacrifice and continue with our journey? No, it must be Prophet Samuel who's offering the sacrifice. Lord, Lord, huh? Who is it? <sighs> Who are you? My lord, I was in Gaibe with your son. And... And... And what? What happened? And the Philistines attacked us. Huh? Is my son alright? Tell me. Is Jonathan alright? Yes, my lord. He's safe for now. We won at Gaibe. But... But... Tell me, what happened? All the Philistines have joined forces, and they're planning to attack again. Huh? They might attack any time now. We must stay here any longer, my lord. The Philistines will attack our children. Hmm. There is no time to waste, my lord. We must act quickly. Bring the offerings for the sacrifice. I will do the sacrifice myself. Get them quick! Yes, my lord. Saul's son Jonathan was stuck in Gaibe with Philistines waiting to attack his army. Saul wanted to raise there as quickly possible, so he decided to start offering the sacrifice himself. Huh? Is he offering the sacrifice? Samuel raised the temple while Saul was offering the sacrifice and he got very, very angry. Stop it! Huh? Stop it, I said! What are you trying to do? I... I... Are you trying to snatch the priesthood also? What right do you have to offer the sacrifice? I'm sorry, Master. I was waiting for you for so many days. And I just got the news that my son, Jonathan, is in trouble. The Philistines can attack Gaibe anytime. So, you thought you could offer the sacrifice yourself? You couldn't wait for me? I'm truly sorry. 
But if we delayed any longer, my son might get killed. Huh? You and your soldiers? Did you forget that it is God who leads Israel in war? Master, please do not misunderstand me. I offer the sacrifice to implore God's help. Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? What obedience are you talking about? Is it my fault that you are late? What? No arrogance too? God is going to take away your kingship. King! King! What is it? Many of our soldiers are deserting us. What? But why? They think that you will not be able to lead them. Huh? You can do whatever you want. I am leaving. Why are you punishing me, master? You know what your mistake was. You did not wait. You are not obedient. Master, please. Don't touch me. God has chosen another one to be the king. Master, please forgive me. Please. Master, forgive me. Samuel was very depressed with what had happened at the temple. He couldn't stop thinking about it at all. What wrong did I do? I have loved and respected Samuel more than my father. Why is he being so cruel to me? How could I have waited any longer when my son's life was in danger? Am I thinking this way because I do not trust in God? Did I offend him by offering the sacrifice? Saul defeated the Philistines in Gaibe and saved Jonathan. But... Saul became victim to a maniac depression. He could never get over to what had happened at the temple of Gilgal. Master, I have brought you the wine you asked. Hmm. What is this? It tastes like blood. Master, this is the best wine in all of Israel. How dare you call me your master? I am Saul, and I'm looking for father's donkey. Donkey? I'm... I'm sorry, master. Where are my donkeys? I have been looking them for so long. What is he talking about? I don't know, but something is seriously wrong. I think he's possessed by a ghost. Yes, he could be possessed. It is neither ghost nor devil. It's his own fear. Don't you remember? It started in Gilgal when he broke up with Prophet Samuel. Ah, yes. He has been like this for so long now. I hope he gets back to his senses soon. Huh? Who is this? Samuel, it's you. Stop strangling me. I'm going to kill you. Ah! What just happened? It was just a dream. Saul's trouble increased every day. The people around him brought a musician thinking that music will comfort him. And they invited David, a great musician, to comfort Saul. But this musician, David, went on to become the next king of Israel. Wow! Did he really go crazy, father? Yes, Lucy. Saul's mind was troubled with what had happened, and he could never recover from it. Did his son die in the battle, father? No, he didn't. Saul's son, Jonathan, survived, and he became a great friend of David. Father, was Saul really a bad person? Hmm, no, my dear. In fact, Saul more or less had a preparatory role, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist had made way for Jesus, and in the same way, Saul prepared the way for David. Hmm, I think his breakup with Samuel changed him as a person. 
You are correct. When Samuel left him, his spirits were crushed and he fell victim to depression and jealousy. He could no longer distinguish between friends and foes and he ended up killing many innocent people. So, shall I start with my questions then? Who can tell me which tribe Saul belonged to? Me, me. <laughs> yes, Matthew. Saul belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. Correct, Matthew. Why did Israelites demand a king? Israelites wanted an army to defend themselves and they demanded a king so that he can command the army. And who were the enemies of Israel? The Philistines, father. Good. Now who appointed Saul as the king of Israel? It was prophet Samuel. Correct. And what was Saul's profession before he became a king? He was a farmer. And what was his father's name? Mm, his father's name was Kish. Good, Matthew. Now who can tell me why Samuel got angry with Saul? Saul was waiting for Samuel at Gilgal to offer a sacrifice. But while waiting, he got the news that his son was about to be attacked by the Philistines. So in order to save his son, he had to reach there quickly. And he decided to offer the sacrifice himself without waiting for Samuel. And when Samuel saw Saul offering the sacrifice, he got really angry. Samuel also told him that another person was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. This troubled Saul's mind for a long time and he fell into a depression. <laughs> Very good both of you. So that's it children. We'll meet again tomorrow then. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David tomorrow? Hmm. Before I tell you the story of King David, I'll tell you the story of David, the shepherd. Is he the one who defeated the giant Goliath, father? Yes, Lucy. David killed a giant named Goliath and defeated the Philistine army. Wow, it's going to be wonderful. We will meet tomorrow at the same time. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye father. father.